Uh, let's see, this is very light. So curious to see what crystal shape we have on this one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the crystal shape is gone in this one. <laughs> So my bolo today, well, this one's actually a, a Jasper. I didn't really get this one because of the, the amazing stone so much as the really, really nice silver work that's around it. It's one of probably about 20, 25 bolos that I have now. Got uh, quite a few of those. So uh, got a box in front of me here today. And for some reason, I was asked if I had a big breakfast this morning. So I don't know what exactly that has to do anything, but I'm gonna check and see if I've got a clue here. I'm one of the most abundant minerals on earth. My secret talent is I can help ease your stomach pain. If we're talking about real world properties, I would say probably we're looking at something akin to an antacid and that makes me think calcite because calcite and antacids are both calcium carbonate and the identical chemical formula. So let's see what we've got in here. Yep, that's what I thought. We have a big calcite rhomb, uh, short for rhombohedral, which uh, refers to the shape. This is not as it grows in the ground, this is what we call a cleavage rhombohedral. Calcite, the way it forms, has three directions of perfect cleavage, and if you strike them in those directions, you get these repeating flat planes. You'll see right here that we've got multiple planes that are parallel to one another. Knock on wood, I don't drop this. If this were dropped, it would actually split into smaller pieces that would mirror the shape of this. In fact, if we look really close right here, you'll see that there is a cleavage going through the middle of the stone, mirroring the outer shape of it right there. One of the other things you see occasionally, typically if you find these out at a show, they're going to be a little rough around the edges because they're literally just not. They're, they're not cut, they're not polished. This is actually just from a blow that has been struck onto the stone to get these cleavage rhombohedrals. But you can occasionally find really nice polished ones out there that are not faceted, but they're polished into a smooth form of this, and they're typically completely flawless inside, so those are really, really fun if you can find one of those. Makes for a great piece for your collection. Not a very hard stone either. It's about a three on the Mohs hardness scale, and in fact, calcite is the index stone for the number three on the Mohs hardness scale. If you take it and you put it in front of some writing. One of the reasons that they like to do these is you can see really, really nice double refraction. So calcite is very, very doubly refractive. What we mean by that is when light goes through a transparent object, sometimes in many gemstones, it splits into two rays of light. If it's something like diamond or garnet or spinel, it's gonna stay in one, but in many gemstones like sapphire or peridot or tanzanite, it'll split into two, and in calcite, it splits further apart than in almost any other gemstone. And so it's, it's a really fun one to see this double refraction property here. All right, see what we got next. One of the things about calcite is if you wanted to collect one mineral specimen, yet have an incredibly diverse and varied collection, you could collect just calcite and calcite alone. It's just absolutely amazing. So very, very confident that there's calcite in this box. I have no idea what it could look like because it could be one of just a million different things. So let's see what we've got here. Oh, okay. That's a really cool one. That's not what I would have actually been expecting. This is a spherocalcite. So these, uh, you can see the areas here where you've got bubbles in the matrix rock. So this is calcite that formed in an igneous environment, Italy, basically. So think of all the volcanoes you've got around there. What we're looking at here is not one crystal of calcite, but many, 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 many crystals of calcite that have stacked and radiated outward. So you start with one little crystal and then it forms very quickly and another starts forming at the same time and they just radiated out from that one central point and formed a nice little sphere. Very cool one, yeah. Of all the forms, that was not the one I was expecting to find right off the bat. I'm sitting here thinking of, well, I'll show you what I'm thinking of because I'm sure there's gonna be other shapes. Next, another calcite, I'm sure. Let's see what we've got in this one. Okay, 
Another, see, there's gonna be so many crystal forms that you're gonna see with these. This one is a Chinese calcite. These make for spectacular ornamental pieces. To me, I've always thought they looked like pink rose petals. They've just got this really, really floral shape with these elongated crystals. The calcite uh, forms in the trigonal system and typically you get these scalenohedrals, which is a very long pointed crystal that they often refer to as a dog's tooth because it literally just looks like a dog. So this is very similar to that dog's tooth shape. You can see how it's long and pointed, but instead of just being pointed all the way around, it's elongated in one direction. And so we get what looks like a flower petal here. These calcites from this Chinese location have really nice dusting of pyrite on them as well. You'll find that calcite, it's a very common mineral to find worldwide. And so it occurs alongside many, many other minerals out there so you can get it occurring with dolomite, quartz, fluorite, pyrite, chalcopyrite, just tons of other stuff occurs alongside it. Many calcites fluoresce, and in fact, not only will they fluoresce, but many of them will also phosphoresce. So for fluorescence, what we have is the atoms of the calcite being excited by either short wave or long wave ultraviolet light the atoms are excited into a higher state, and as they lose that energy, they radiate that energy off in the form of visible light. One really fun thing to do when you're collecting is if you collect fluorescent specimens, is you can have two entirely different collections depending on what lighting you have on it. Next. Crossing fingers, hoping for a scalenohedral here. We got any dog tooth? Yes! Here's a dog tooth. Okay. Here is that dog tooth shape that I was telling you about. This looks like it could just bite you. Nice little terminations there. And this one is from England. Last one we had was from China. And of course we let off with Iceland and then we had the uh, spherocalcite from Italy. So you can see calcite distribution is worldwide. I mean, it occurs all over the place. So far we haven't had to with the same form yet. When I'm talking about the terminations, when crystals grow, they grow along three different axes. Basically think of it almost like a uh, width, depth, and, and, and length. In the C direction, which is the, for prismatic crystals, is the long direction that they grow in, they will take an outer shape that mirrors their shape on a molecular level. So the terminated dog tooth shape or this little cone that you're seeing here is the outward expression of all of those calcite atoms stacked up together. That is what gives the crystal its form and habit. And you can see, especially this little guy right here is just super, super sharp. They're not always small like this. These dog tooth calcites are actually the size of dog's teeth, but there are some that look like they would belong in a megalodon. Okay, it looks like we've got a smaller one here. If you ever wind up on one of our unboxings, never shake the box. If you shake a calcite, you'll wind up with many, many, many smaller calcites in the box. Here, let's hope, yes, good things do in fact come in small packages. This one I really know. So here we have another really good dog tooth. Here we have a Brushy Creek Mine calcite. These are from Missouri and these are one of my favorites. One of the reasons being is these neat little chalcopyrites. I was saying earlier that calcites occur alongside many, many other minerals. And so chalcopyrite is what you're really looking for in a nice Brushy Creek specimen. See, it's got that nice iridescence there. So you get these nice little golds and almost uh, oranges and greens and then the gray of the calcite is just a perfect little neutral backdrop for it. These are very, very aesthetic specimens, very collectible, and just super, super popular. I love this little guy, I wanna take it home. Okay, <laughs> this is not an unboxing, this is an unhanding. All right, here we have a amethyst geode or part of an amethyst geode from Brazil. And occasionally these grow with very nice scalenohedral, big dog tooth calcites inside. So I was telling you some of these things almost look like they belong in a megalodon or, or some other kind of shark suits. Those are gigantic, super well terminated and really, really setting off the purple in the background there. So like I said, you'll find these along all sorts of different mineral specimens. And now, you know, we've seen China, we've seen Brazil here, we've seen US, Italy, all over the world where you find really interesting calcites.
I could literally do this all day, and not only would I enjoy it, but we could do this all day and never repeat the same types of look with the calcites. There's literally that many forms. So let's see what we got in this one. And yep, we got a new one. So this is really cool. This is a form of calcite that we call poker chip calcites. These are so-called because if you get a good look here, the way the crystal forms is very, very flat, six-sided, and a lot of the times they'll even form in stacks. These are from Mexico. Mexico is really, really well renowned for having these poker chip calcites. You also get them in China and uh, really, really super aesthetic. These are one of my favorite forms just because of that really nice presentation that you get. I mean, they're just all over the place here. Look at that. One of the things with mineral specimens, of course, is that they are very collectible. Everyone is unique, but there are a lot of similar things that you wanna look for. This is a form that I'm, I collect myself in calcites. What, uh, for instance, would make this a really great addition to the collection is coverage. You'll notice on this specimen that the mineral covers almost the entire face of it. It's on matrix, but the matrix has actually been trimmed somewhat, so it's trimmed in the back there to where there's not an overly large amount of the matrix that makes it fit into the case really well. This one actually sits quite well on its own down on the table, or if you've got a, a mounting for it, it would display very well in this direction. So coverage is important. The crystals are all very well intact. There aren't any contacts where somebody banged into it while it was being recovered or it fell and broke. Condition is absolutely excellent and it's just overall an aesthetic piece. Of course, location can be important as well as what the actual mineral is because that speaks to rarity. For my taste, you absolutely can't go wrong if you really pay attention to the aesthetics, the coverage, the condition, and the aesthetics of the piece. Everybody's always gonna enjoy something that looks good. Well, let's see, this is very light, so curious to see what crystal shape we have on this one. <laughs> okay, <laughs> the crystal shape is gone in this one. <laughs> so this is something you don't see very often, and that is a faceted calcite. You'll be very careful with this one, because remember, we're looking at something that is very soft here. It's a three on the Mohs hardness, and if I drop it, it's done. Why would you facet a calcite if it's that soft? You can't really put it in jewelry effectively. Well, there are a lot of gemstones that are just collectible. We like to have them because they are still beautiful. They are not the most durable things to set in jewelry, but this is perfectly good to just set on your display or to see in hand with great care. I will tell you, these are really challenging. Those three directions of cleavage make cutting these guys very, very difficult. I know one very, very, very skilled cutter who says he really only cuts about one of these a year, and I think that's probably plenty for him to do. When I was talking earlier, I mentioned the double refractive property. I can see with my naked eye a little bit of doubling on the facet edges, but that's not the real reason that you cut a faceted calcite. The other property that calcite has in abundance is dispersion. So as white light goes through this gemstone, it bends. When it bends, all the different components of the white light bend at different speeds and they start to separate into the rainbow colors. So with a calcite, you get dispersion that's actually even higher than diamond. Thanks for sitting with me uh, for all these calcites. I could do more, but I think that's all the time we've got for today but I do want to take a closer look at this brushy creek. Thanks for joining me on another unboxing. I hope you enjoyed the calcites. Let me know what other collectible mineral specimens you'd like to see and what it is that uh, you collect. I'd also like to hear what your favorite form of the calcite was down in the comments. And don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring that bell so you can join us for more unboxings.